that cheeky devil Lucifer is back and he's having one hell of a time on Netflix. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan and today I'm going to reveal some devilish details about season 4 of Lucifer, including cool easter eggs, ingenious foreshadowing, secret cameos and more things you may have missed. Obviously spoilers ahead if you're not all caught up. If you were shocked by the season 4 finale where Lucifer confessed his love to Chloe, then banished himself from Earth to sit on the throne in Hell, then you'll be even more surprised to know that that moment was cleverly foreshadowed right in the opening scene of the season. The premiere episode began with a montage of a lonely, melancholy Lucifer singing Radiohead's creep at his club looks. Chloe's absence and the throne-like art deco background behind Lucy predicts how he will end the season, alone again without Chloe, sitting on a throne overlooking Hell. The reflection of Lucifer in the piano also foreshadows how split he'll feel this season between his more and less devilish sides, and also how he'll travel from the earth above to the underworld below. And in a really clever detail, as the opening montage plays out, Lucifer's clothes change with each new day, finishing with him in a white shirt and dark suit with a little red handkerchief in his breast pocket. And that's basically the same outfit complete with red pocket square that we see him wearing at the very end of the season when he sat on his throne in Hell. When Chloe visits Father Kinley, he shows her a scrapbook of some of the problems he says were caused by Lucifer's previous visits to Earth. Once we uncovered Lucifer's identity, we were able to uncover evidence of his previous visits with humanity. You're saying he caused the Chicago fire and Nazi Germany? And when the detective turns to the page of clippings from Nazi Germany, there's a photo with none other than Lucifer standing there. However, the devil does not look impressed with the people he encountered, and I think what Father Kinley has misunderstood is that Lucifer's very likely there to find out all about the humans he'll be punishing later in Hell. In fact, this links back to previous mentions of Hitler on the show. How did you actually torture Hitler in Hell? Hitler was a talker. Well, screamer, actually. Shouldn't you be, uh, I don't know, having tea with Hitler by now? As for the Chicago Fire, well, that's a cool Easter egg to one of actress Lauren German's previous TV roles. The Great Chicago Chicago Fire was a real fire that raged for several days in late 1871, but of all the historical events that the Lucifer writers could have picked, they chose this one as Lauren German aka Chloe starred in two seasons of the TV drama Chicago Fire where she played a paramedic. And it's tricky to make out, but there is a Lucifer Morningstar listed on the check-in page for the hotel in Chicago. When Fox cancelled Lucifer after its third season, Lucy fans responded with a resounding hell no and got straight to work online letting everyone know just how much the show meant to them. Thanks to their online campaign, we got our deepest desire, a fiendishly good new season on Netflix. And there's a sly wink to the show's former fate when Father Kinley hands Lucifer his business card. Vatican Investigator. Sounds like a soon-to-be-cancelled TV show. And in a grateful shout out to those many fans who helped raise the series from the dead, the show's writers titled episode 9 Save Lucifer, which is a lovely hat tip to the hashtag Lucy fans used to blow up Twitter. There's a particularly touching moment midway through season 4, where Amenadiel tells Chloe just how proud her father is of her, and the way he says it, it shows that he's seen or spoken to her father in heaven. After all that you've been through, Chloe, what you're worried about most is what's best for those that you care about. No wonder your dad is so proud of you. That revelation is actually a moving reminder of some of the final words Chloe's police officer dad said just before he was murdered. Just tell her it was a good movie. Kids these days. Yeah, I know. But hey, I'm proud of her. By the way, the actor who played Chloe's father in those flashbacks in season 2 is Chris Payne Gilbert, the real-life husband of Leslie Ann Brandt who plays Maze. Speaking of Maze, she gets some hilarious scenes as always in season 4, but there was one particularly intriguing moment in the first episode when she visits Linda. When the Doctor encourages Mazakine to open up about her guilt after hurting Trixie last season, the demon is more than a little reluctant to discuss her emotions. Let's talk about what you're dealing with emotionally. Yeah, I really don't want to. Okay, well maybe it'd help if I spoke your language. You speak well on? Can you even make this done with your blood when you some of your blood and you can't be? What? In a little shout out to her birthplace, South Africa, Leslie Ann Brandt has revealed that she was speaking Afrikaans. And if you were wondering what she said, well, the official Twitter account for Netflix South Africa posted her Afrikaans dialogue. I put that into Google Translate, and here's what it means in English. Can you even make this done with your blood when you put some of your blood in your zombie? 
The role of Eve was actually written with actress Imbar Levy in mind from the start, because one of Lucifer's writers was a big fan of her starring role as a con artist in the TV series Imposters. And what a great choice she was, as her decision to go full on playing the original sinner Eve with all the excitement and innocent wonder of a Disney princess with an extra naughty side was absolute genius. And there are lots of lovely little touches in Eve's scenes, from her drink of choice and apple martini to the apples at the bar and in other scenes. Then there's her arrival in a heavenly white dress with a killer pair of fiery heels, to her later appearances in clothing that's various shades of red. And there's even some foreshadowing of where Lucifer and Eve's new relationship is headed by the end of the season, in the lyrics of the song playing just before Lucy discovers she's back on Earth. Also, Eve's conversation with Father Kinley includes an amusing nod to the opening lines of Catholic Confession, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Forgive me, Father. I am Eve. Music's always been a big part of the show, and there have been some great musical moments this season, kicking off with Lucifer back at the piano singing his heart out to Creep, Maze declaring her love to an oblivious Eve by singing Wonderwall, and Lucy, Ella and Dan getting their groove on in the season finale with a little throwback to Dirty Dancing. Indeed, that toe-tapping season finale could well pave the way for a full-on musical episode next season, according to co-showrunner Ildi Modrovic, who's been eager to get the Lucifer cast in full song and dance mode for some time now. And it looks like actor Tom Ellis would definitely be up for that, because not only is last season's Luck Be A Lady Tonight scene one of his favourite moments in the show so far, but he's also said that the dance sequence in the finale was his favourite filming moment of season four. By the way, we might never have heard Tom break into song on the show if it hadn't have been for a cast and crew night out. Originally, the plan for the series was just for Lucifer to play the piano, but when the writers heard Tom belt out Mustang Sally at a karaoke bar, they discovered their lead actor could really sing, and decided to include it in the show. Remember the sequence where Amenadiel approaches random strangers in an effort to connect more with human beings now he's decided to stay on Earth? Well, when out of the blue he stops by for a chat with a woman who's working on her laptop in a coffee shop, that woman he's interrupting is actually played by one of Lucifer's showrunners, Ildi Modrovic, who also wrote this very episode. And Ildi's co-showrunner Joe Henderson snuck in an Easter egg to another one of his creations in the scene where Maze and Trixie make up at the police precinct. Trixie is reading a comic book called Skyward, all about the adventures of a young woman born into a low-gravity world, and Joe both wrote the comic book and the episode this appears in. Trixie's previous reading material in the show has also provided interesting Easter eggs. For example, the book Coraline that her mother read to her was written by Neil Gaiman, the co-creator of the Sandman graphic novel, which introduced the Lucifer character that this TV series is loosely based on. So, were there any other cool details or Easter eggs you spotted in Season 4, and what were your favourite moments? Tap left for my full breakdown of the season finale, plus my Season 5 predictions, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. Congratulations to the winner of the last round of my Avengers giveaway! Send me a message from my About page so I can send you the prize. And if you enjoyed this, a thumbs up and a share are hugely appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you next time! yippee ki movie lovers!